Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome to this edition of Real Projects, um, organized by AFB Scotland. It is titled Managing Asset Performance and Infrastructure in Scotland's Largest Flexible Thermal Power Plant. My name is Tony Fatuko. I'm the Real Projects Coordinator for Scotland, and I will be your host today. I'm just going to talk about a few housekeeping. Um, the talk will usually last for about 35 to 40 minutes. We would have questions at the end of the day. Um, so if you do have questions, please type, type it into the chat box as we're going. We will definitely be dealing with the questions. Um, the session will be recorded and it'll also be put on our YouTube channel at the end of the day. And our speaker today is Amitaj, who is one of Real Projects team as well, um, is an prof energy professional with over 15 years of industry experience. And since July 2018, he has been the engineering manager at SSE, Peter Ed Power Station in Scotland, the largest um, site. Prior to that, he led electrical engineering in SSE as well. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Amitaj if he's ready for us right now. Amitaj, are you there? All right, thank you everyone. Um, hopefully you can see my screen and uh, welcome aboard um, uh, to this presentation. The title of the presentation is Managing, fl as Managing Asset Performance and Infrastructure on Scotland's Largest uh, Thermal Flexible Power Plant. We'll go through a number of slides. Uh, most of them are photographs to give you a bit of a perspective on what we do on a real-time basis. So before we get underway, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm, as, as, a, as Toyin mentioned, I'm an engineering manager at, at Peterhead Power Station, uh, manage a large multidisciplinary engineering team. Uh, we'll go through a little bit about the team very shortly. I've got some of my colleagues joined me here today as well. Uh, we manage a fairly large multidisciplinary team and uh, I'm a chartered engineer. Uh, I'm also a fellow of IET, uh, was the second youngest fellow of uh, IET in Scotland. I've published over 34 papers uh, over the last 12 years, predominantly on high voltage assets, transformers, cables, switchgear. Uh, actually, the 35th paper is being presented next week. So I published quite a lot, uh, only because it's one way of giving back to an industry, uh, an industry where I've learned a lot from my peers, and it's a way of contributing back to what I've learned uh, back to the industry. I'm a professional registration advisor, so I do help a lot of uh, young engineers with uh, the applications for incorporated and chartered engineers in Northeast Scotland. So anyone looking for assistance, please go through the IET and I'm more than happy to help you out there. I'm an incoming BAME officer for Wrexham Glenda University. Um, that's a bit of a privilege to take that on board and help fellow students uh, working on um, working in the studying in the university as well. I'm a member of the SSE's uh, Thermal Inclusion and Diversity Team. It's something that's a bit of a passion of mine, promoting diversity and inclusion at workplace. Uh, I'm an incoming member of the IET Council. Uh, the, thank you everyone who voted for me, uh, who supported and nominated, nominated me for that as well. So I um, start, start that in October later, later on this year. I'm also on the leadership working group for AFB, as Toyin mentioned, so that's one of my other uh, avenues that I do is uh, help out the AFB Scotland and, and the leadership board, which is managed by Roy. Uh, and I'm also part of the engineering team uh, on, a, on a volunteer basis uh, from um, participating in African development choices um, that are designing solar panels for supplying uh, water pumps to end up supplying um, supplying water in schools in Kenya, something that is quite fortunate to be part of and applying electrical engineering skills to that. Uh, qualification wise, I've got a Bachelor of Engineering degree, uh, recently Diploma in Asset Management, I'm currently fin finishing off an MBA uh, due to finish early next year. So that's a little bit about myself. I'm moving on to the engineering uh, team at Peterhead Power Station. Um, so this gives you a bit of a, a diagram of the engineering team at the power station. Uh, on the left hand side, um, we have the uh, electrical engineering team, predominantly high voltage, low voltage DSEA uh, engineers. We've got mechanical engineering team where they have rotating plant engineers, pressure systems engineers. Uh, in CNI engineering, we have instrumentation and control engineers. We have process engineers on site. We have maintenance engineers. Maintenance engineers' responsibility is to fix what's broken today. So that's what, therefore them, what's here and now is the most important thing. We have the planning and scheduling team that comes under, under the engineering team discipline. And we've got, also got project engineers as well. 
So I'm quite fortunate today over here uh, to be joined by two of a recent intakes, uh, Wilson Mohahi uh, and, 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 and Zoheib Hamid, who are both from a diverse background and, and I would, they would like to introduce themselves as well. So I'll hand over to you, Wilson, first. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Wilson Mohahi. I'm the planning engineer at Peter Head Power Station. I recently joined uh, SSE from all the way from Zimbabwe in Africa in October. And yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you and meeting you all. And I believe uh, my coming into the team will help spruce up different uh, ideas and views for Peter and Power Station. Thank you very much. I'm also an industrial engineer by profession. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, um, Thanks, uh, over to you, Zohib. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Zohib, and I'm from Pakistan, and I joined SSC as a CNI engineer, um, along with Wilson. And um, yeah, Ami just wanted to uh, make me comment on the benefits of inclusion and diversity. I think that it brings in a new perspectives and innovation into a workplace and inspires a, um, a feeling that we're all in this together. And I think that's the principal benefit. And with that, I'll just uh, hand over back to Ami to continue. Cool. Cool. Th thank you, Wilson. And um, so, as you can see, we've got a fairly large, a large diverse team at, at Peterhead Power Station from diverse backgrounds. And our recent intakes have been from ethnic uh, background, not intentionally, that ad ended up being the, the, the outcome of the selection process. Moving on to Peterhead Power Station and to the presentation of this topic. Uh, this overview of the site, we are, as you can see, Peterhead Power Station is right in, uh, north up here uh, in, in northeast of Scotland, Scotland's largest combined gas, gas, cycle, uh, gas cycle site of uh, 1,180 1, megawatts of total capacity. Uh, we export um, this, this power uh, energy at 275 kV. Um, we've got three gas turbines at the power station, one steam turbine. Uh, the steam turbine was powered in late 1990s and with the original operation of the site was in 1982. The station uh, provides flexible um, thermal flexibility and ancillary services national grid. We'll have a look at the next slide, what services we pro provide, but a large proportion of our operation is to counterbalance and allow more, more flexible generation in terms of, uh, of renewable and renewable penetration in Scotland. So we counter counter support the uh, renewable penetration in Scotland and our operation is based uh, predominantly around that. What we focus on from thermal energy, uh, we provide frequency response from Peterhead power station. We do provide a lot of reactive power, voltage management to a large extent supporting reactive power. Inertia is quite a large thing for us considering we are one of the large, largest generators in Northeast of Scotland. So we provide a lot of stability to, to grid in terms of inertia. We also provide reserve power that's inherent of our, our generation at, at the station. Now to the ex exciting photos, talking about the power station itself. This is a view of the Peter Head power station. Um, we'll start from this side over here. We have got a gas pipeline that, that runs in, which is owned by ACAC. Uh, and the pipeline is 16 and a half kilometers long, 914 millimeters in diameter. We run between, between 60 to 70 bar normally, but we do have option of running down to 35 bar. Comes down over here, which is a pressure reduction station at Peter Head power station. We drop it down to around 28 bar. This is the original site, site we, we had, the original site uh, was uh, built in 1980, like, uh, went live in 1982, with this being unit one, this being unit two, uh, and this station was repowered as we learned in the last slide in 90, late 1990s, and that's what they, these three machines in terms of the gas turbines were installed at the power station. Hence, gas pipeline was run in for 16 and a half kilometers, new PRS supply was put in, pressure reduction station, and then goes and feeds out gas turbines, gas turbine number 11, gas turbine number 12, and gas turbine number 13. Then from there, from gas turbines on the discharge side, there's heat recovery steam generators, they're pretty much three boilers over here, and the, dish, and, the, and the exhaust is through a 90 meter chimney over here, uh, and the heat from the HRSG itself from the boilers, they run, it runs through a pipe bridge, with steam's carried out to run an original steam turbine in here in unit one. This unit over here, unit two, is not in operation anymore. It is uh, made redundant. These ex exhaust ducts, shall we say, or ch um, were, are no longer in service. Uh, and 
they are not being used for, for, for unit one itself because it's a steam turbine. This is auxiliary boiler at the power station. We use it for supplying initial steam supply, glen steam at the power station for starting up the units. This is the exhaust that goes to the 170 meter chimney that we have. On, the, on this side, we have got water treatment plant. Uh, we take water from the town's water and use it to run demon, use it to run demon water for a lot of a lot of process elements at the station. We've got a million liter diesel diesel uh, diesel storage tank facility over here. From here, this side is where our CW intake comes in. These are the CW screens. We have a CW intake structure over here where we have large pumps. And this is the CW outfall over here on the other side. We'll, we'll see several other photos of the same, same, same power station. This, this, is, this view is from the other side. Um, these are the, the same turbines we talked about, gas turbine 11, 12, uh, gas turbine 11, 12, and 13, uh, it being the HRSGs over here. These are the transformers, the step up, and we export via underground cables. So there's four, cable, four, four machines, as, as we talked about, they are in service. Uh, one, one, two, third one over here, and the fourth one is a transformer in here, and they all run by underground cables to this 275 kV substation across the road. This is a main highway, and then we export to national national grid from there. This is a view of the CW outfall on, on this view over here. Um, this is a control room. This is the administration building that we have. So it gives you a perspective on the, on the size. Another view from the side uh, gives you a perspective of, whole, of the whole power station um, uh, compared to the whole bottom community. It is a fairly large landmass and structure on, on the, in the area. This is a view of the steam turbine. Uh, this steam turbine is in here. This is unit one steam turbine, which, which was originally sized for 660 megawatts. Now it's derated to 400 megawatts after the upgrades in 19, late 1990s. The steam turbine uh, runs at 3000 RPM uh, and we've got HP turbine IP and two LPs, generator and excitation system, condenser and a whole lot of ancillary equipment on, on the left-hand side slide over here. This is that same view of, a, of the same uh, generator that we have got, the 660 megawatt generator, derated to 400 megawatts during an outage in 2019. You can see the amount of effort. And this is just to, during a minor outage on the generator. Uh, and it gives you a perspective of amount of effort that's required in, in planning and executing this large, uh, large uh, machine outages. This, view, this is a view of our LP, turbo, LP turbine. Take go back. This is an LP turbine over here. We'll have a look look at the internal of the LP blades. What spins it at 3,000 RPM? And this is a view of our LP turbine. It, it is currently a spare one at, at the moment that just been currently being refurbished. Uh, and this LP turbine is 50 weighs 57 tons. The diameter of this the blades it's of last stage blades is 3.6 uh, meters in diameter and approximately 25 meters 25 feet long. This is a photograph of our gas turbines, a gas turbine itself during a lifetime extension in 2018. Um, a full NDT was carried on the drive train in 2018. The, the rotors have been relived for another 100,000 hours. The, the rotor exchange concept, which was the first in Europe that was applied by SEC Peter Head, um, which has now become a, a, a constant use for the asset owner, for, the, for Siemens, for other machines. Uh, and in this case over here, the hub is a hub, new hub was installed and the white hub materials, tiles, the same materials that's what's used on outdoor tiles and spaceships, 15 stage compressor, it's a 4000 F, 4000 F machine. We'll go through that a bit more later on. Uh, this is a view of the same same effort that we had a good partner in Siemens carrying out those lifetime extension outages for us in 2018. This uh, this rotor itself on the gas turbine weighs 97 tons. It gives you a perspective of the equipment and the size in context. This is a view of our gas turbine building internal inside the building during a 2018 outage, uh, feeding into the uh, this on the top is the gas turbine section. This gives you perspective of uh, some of the works that we do at the power station. We recently uh, upgraded uh, an 11 kV motor at the power station, 1.2 megawatt 11 kV direct online motor. Uh, and this is used to supply redundancy in our CW works. 
this is a photograph of our gas turbine generator. Um, and this is a stationary element called the stator. Uh, this is getting ready during an electrical testing during an outage uh, um, in 2019, 2018, sorry. This is a photograph of this. This is the same generator over here. And the stator is over here, the stationary element. This is the rotor. It's pretty much in a simple terminology is a coil spinning around a magnet. Uh, this being this being the coil, this being the magnet over here. The coil itself, this is called the rotor, uh, which was been extracted out during a forced outage in 2018, 2017. This rotor itself weighs 46 ton. It, spin, it spins at 3000 RPM. It's a two-pole rotor and our generators are, are enclosed with hydrogen for cooling purposes. This is the same rotor going off-site uh, for a repair an off-site facility, um, and this, the rotor was um, uh, was replaced with a newer rotor. With a, with a newer rotor, and that risk is no longer carried out with us at SSC Peterhead Power Station. So we look. What the point is, we do comprehensive root cause analysis and and and, and eliminate any issues with the existing machines. This is a photograph of our gas, uh, gas turbine generator transformer where the IPBs or isolated phase bus bars carry out uh, the generation power all the way to a low voltage side over here on a transformer. We step up the step up on the 275 KV side and feed the national grid side. So it gives you a perspective of this transformer is rated at 290, 297 MVA. This is on a gas turbines. This is a transformer photograph from a steam turbine. This transformer is one of the larger ones in the country, rated at 776 MVA, so 776 MVA. This is not a, an air-cooled transformer. In, instead, it is, you're relying on, on uh, oil, water, heat exchanges. Hence, you cannot see a conservator or radiators in this photograph. Uh, it comes out through the bushings, through the bus bar connections, and connection by a 275 KV and sp supplying uh, power to national grid. We talked about HRSGs before. Uh, this is a photograph of our HRSG uh, where this exhaust comes in from the gas turbine side. We do have some acid integrity concerns on uh, transition ducts, uh, hence why we do periodic maintenance and inspections on our on on transition ducts. So it gives you a bit of an impression of the assets that we look after. We've also got a contract for load restoration, uh, meaning that uh, should the should the grid go black and power is restored to Peterhead, it uh, will allow us to restore power to the national grid on a very prompt basis. So for that to happen, uh, we have got we have got hired diesel generators from Agreco that feed our critical supplies. These are fairly small 750 kVA diesel generators that supply our critical elements at the power station. Should we go black, these will maintain supply to our critical supplies and when the power does come back online we are in a position to restore power on a prompt basis and supply back, uh, power back to an uh, international grid. This is a photograph of our new auxiliary boiler that was installed during the pandemic in 2020 uh, showing you that the workforce carried on working uh, during, during a tough Tough and challenging period. This is a 25 ton an hour um, boiler, uh, auxiliary boiler that supplies auxiliary steam predominantly to our Glen steam system. This is a photograph of uh, the same boiler installed, uh, your burners and your superheater and the whole boiler in, in current configuration. This is a photograph of the decommissioning uh, activities we're planning to do. We talked about on the very first or second slide that we are planning to decommission these ductwork, uh, which feeds into the 170 meter chimney. So and in the middle of it here, we've got in-service transformers. So not only we've got a challenge of running a 1,180 megawatt power station, we've got challenges of maintaining uh, assets around plant we're trying to, trying to decommission in the next few years. So that's a challenging project that we are currently managing. This is a photograph of our control room that we have at the power station. Uh, very uh, re recently in 2016, we uh, in upgraded the control system at the power station. Uh, the power station control system is now DCS based uh, and it, it has eliminated a lot of manual interventions that our operators rec were required at one stage of time to operate the plant. So this has been a blessing in disguise for us uh, and allows a lot of remote monitoring to happen as well. 
At SASC Peterhead Power Station, uh, we have a number of outages. Some majority of them are statutory based, uh, but some at two yearly, a four yearly basis. This is a photograph from our outage briefing room in 2019, where we carried out a large 48 day PSSR inspection. Uh, and this is a briefing that we would bring uh, all contract supervisors together on a daily basis, try to understand the performance and progress on each on each on each task on 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 on, the, on site, and trying to understand where the constraints lie and how we can support and work together. At SSC, at Peter Head, we take safety very seriously, uh, both with our staff and our contractors. We have a very strong culture in maintaining uh, asset performance and asset safety and, and personnel safety as well. So during outages, we have a lot of contractor recognition awards that are carried out for ensuring the plant and assets and ensure and individuals remain safe. So these photographs of the last 15, 20 minutes give you a bit of a perspective about Peterhead Power Station, some of the assets we currently have at the power station and some of the diverse workforce that we have at the station. The next, the next uh, part of this, of this slide, of this presentation, will talk about how we actually manage the, the title of asset performance at the station, what, what processes or activities we use to manage performance. So one of the first things we use is a computerized maintenance management system, or we have called Maxima within the business. Uh, it's also a tool that's used widely by other asset owners as well. We use Maxima for work management, for preventive maintenance, for corrective maintenance. And to give you an idea or a perspective, we have over 7,800 preventative maintenance um, tasks, shall I say, within, within Maxima maintaining the assets and, and a large majority of them are critically assessed to understand when, we, when we, they're gonna be carried out during an outage. Some of them have time frequencies to understand when, when and how and when we should be interfering with periodic maintenance. We also have a very comprehensive team in terms of where Wilson, Wilson, Wilson works in, in planning. We have a two week look ahead uh, where we look at what the type of work orders we have in system, what we're gonna plan, how the safety from system is gonna be organized, what the duration of the activity will be and how we can ensure there's proper coordination and multi, multiple working parties can be working together. For us at the station, this is our lifeline, the engineering standards. Uh, engineering standards is what require what is what's the the thermal energies uh, baseline for operating the units. Uh, there, there are num numerous engineering standards that we we operate to uh, that allows us to ensure integrity of the assets. Uh, the engineering standards stipulate the the minimum periodic maintenance intervals activities we need to be performing, and we align ourselves towards towards that with with maxima. We have also um, got a, an asset life assessment program that relies on actually doing an audit against the engineering standards by a centralized engineering team, ensuring compliance and com compliance to the international standards, uh, local good practice guides, as well as our internal good practice initiatives that we have within the business. Uh, as mentioned in the very first few slides, we have a rigorous outage management system, um, uh, which is gated. We go through several gates before the, the activity is actually allowed to be undertaken on site. Um, and and this, uh, we have follow a five year program. If this wasn't enough, we have got a very comprehensive uh, process in ma managing CapEx and OPEX at the station. Um, to a large extent, we are managing assets. Uh, some assets are 20 years old on the gas turbines. Some assets on the steam turbine side are over 40 years old. As a result, we have got a mixture of assets and life scales. And so it's quite challenging for us to manage our operating life cycle for these assets. Just for commercial sensitivity, I haven't put the numbers down on what a CapEx and OPEX budget looks like uh, on, a, on a yearly, year, year on year basis. We've got a very good partner in Siemens in terms of our gas turbine. Uh, we have got um, a, a lifetime service agreement for them uh, with them that allows us to perform minor inspection activities, uh, hot gas bath inspection, major activities with Siemens on a periodic basis. Uh, for us, a minor is every, every 8,300 hours. A hot gas bath inspection is, is three times that, that frequency. And we do also have a major lifetime extensions being carried out at the station. 
majority of our work that we do at the station is aligned uh, towards the ISO 55000 principles uh, and the business has set up an asset performance directorate within the last year and a half and, and they are working towards ISO 55 certification in their, on, their, on their framework. If that wasn't enough for us, we do a lot of change management at the power station. We have over, over 150 change management processes in place at the moment, where we have uh, making minor or major changes to assets and our asset engineers and our project engineers work collectively to ensure we can design the change in-house, do risk assessments on the changes and then execute the changes as well. When we are, when we are doing all of that, we also manage forced outages as well. Uh, and on the left hand side is a photograph of a very, of very small tube leak that we found uh, in, a, in a HRS sheet itself. So a shutdown and planning for a forced shutdown, executing a forced shutdown and managing and executing it safely is something that our engineering team do to manage the asset performance of the station. Or on the right hand side, as we saw, as we learned in the earlier few slides, where there was a failure of earth fault on the on the road uh, on one of our gas turbine generators, we effectively managed that as well. And and these come as a priority because these have got direct impact on generation. Very proud of and of, of the work that we have undertaken is the innovation and growth opportunities that we found over the last three years while I've been with the power station. Um, well, one of the, these opportunities are one of the first ones is condenser back pressure improvements. We've made significant improvements to our condenser back pressure and uh, increased efficiency of the station by having a three approximate, approximately three megawatts uh, additional megawatts from the steam turbine. Uh, which is uh, relatively good for us for a serviced age asset of 40 plus years service. Our startup profiles have improved significantly. We, are, uh, we provide a lot more flexible generation to National Grid, uh, as we said in the very, very first few slides, counteracting or supporting some to allow more renewable penetration in Scotland. So by providing more flexible service, we are able to allow even more renewable generation uh, into the grid. And our flexibility has improved significantly over the last, um, last three years. For example, a call start used to take approximately nine hours. No, now we have shaved off approximately two and a half hours from that. And our warm start has got significant improvements as well. And that all the stats are based on our hot, hot metal temperatures that we have on our steam turbines, which, which is a limiting factor. We've made significant improvements to our imbalancing imbalances on our import power at the power station, uh, where our import power does no longer has uh, um, any significant Im uh, imbalances that we are exposed to as a business. We've made efficiency improvements. We're currently working on several business cases to install variable speed drives on large uh, direct online motors, thereby saving, providing more energy efficiency and savings for the power station. Uh, being an acid age, uh, acid age, acid age power station, we ha we do experience from passing valves, passing drain valves, etc., that allow for a lot of steam loss. We have worked quite diligently and on a on a comprehensive plan over the last two years, uh, and uh, continue to do so to manage steam loss. We ex estimate approximately uh, approximately one megawatt of steam loss will be um, prevented by the measures that we are currently planning and actually implementing at the moment from the power station. We have reduced our stable export limit power, uh, th thereby at times where we may not be in merit, we are in merit and, and we have seen instances we are running in lower loads. Uh, for example, our a stable export limit has dropped from 240 megawatts, which was a minimum generation from PDAD power station to approximately 225, depending on, on in, in some instances around 218, depending on the, on the current, on the um, external atmospheric conditions at the time. We have off recently in the last three months carried out a number of comprehensive frequency response tests and that has allowed us to reduce our stable export limits, but also in doing so have provided a lot more flexible offering and frequency response to national grid, something that a station holds quite deeply to itself. 
In doing so, we're making a lot of changes to our assets, uh, a, a large component of uh, investment for us at the power station is the capital investments that we have and, and on, the, on the pressure systems and revenue investments that we have on the pressure systems side of, uh, side of things, which we're governed by PSSR 2000 regulations. So by doing a number of changes, we have optimized the performance of our written scheme uh, and a written scheme of examination on pressure systems, thereby optimizing uh, asset interventions and also performance from our, our side. So I think hopefully this presentation gives you an overview of the last 39 slides of the performance, um, how we manage the performance at Peterhead Power Station. Over to you, Toyin. Thank you very much, Amitor. That is such a lovely presentation. Um, gives us a perspective of the amount of work and the magnitude. You know, I've never been to Peter Head Station, but just, you know, the sheer scale of what goes on is just really, really impressive. We do have a few questions that's come up. So um, what I'm going to do is I can let people actually unmute themselves and just ask their questions if that's okay. Um, can I have, um, it's Moritala, Agile, um, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question, or do you want me to go ahead? Yeah, thank, thank you, you thank you, so, thank you so, so much for the um, presentation. Um, I actually didn't catch up the name of the presenter. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering because while you are doing the presentation, I noticed there's been a lot of um, talk on the turbines and the and the rotor. So I was just checking from the um, environmental point of view, like um, how do you how, how how do you manage how do you recycle um, like for example when you may, when you talked about the rotor when it gets to the end end of life how do you go about the recycling? Okay. Yes. So, so yeah, at the moment we have got a dedicated budget for decommissioning of the power station. Uh, we are, uh, we have at the moment this for gas turbines itself. We have no plans to decommission the power station. The station, the gas turbines were relived in 2018, allowing us another minimum of 100,000 hours, which will see us through to the end of the life of the power station. Uh, whether they've been um, whether they've been 2030 or thereabouts. Uh, so, at the moment, there is no plans for decommissioning any larger assets. Uh, but for station, for, we talked about de other areas that we decommissioning. For example, the ductwork, which we talked about in this um, in this slide over here. Uh, this is something that we the, the, the business carries a, ca uh, a budget for decommissioning. Uh, we have identified uh, areas that are required to decommission. Uh, we do not instantly have got planning of the project installed so hence there you might see if you look closely there's some scaffolding barriers installed to prevent staff going in personnel safety is number one for us so we ensure that uh, safety of personnel is not compromised so hopefully it gives you a perspective there's a lot of challenges in, in, in decommissioning in an area like this including asbestos and and viridium to say number of number of minor hazards so we have got a dedicated decommissioning team within the business as well that helps us with planning and executing this work Okay. okay, thank you yeah, very much. Um, Amato, I still have another question. Can you just go yeah. ahead with that one now as well? Oh, yeah, oh, that would be great then. Yeah, my second, my other question is just more on like focusing more on the security part of things. I'm looking at the fact that you've been doing a lot of um, of remote controlling and uh, monitoring of the of the power station itself, considering the the yeah the control room that you showed earlier. Yes, yeah, so um, could you please just, um, if you can take us along with how, with the vulnerability that you'll be facing considering the, the wireless communication side of things. Can, is the, have, you, have you ever had any issue with like uh, internet security or communication security? Okay, uh, so, so thank you, Marita. Um, the, the, the cook, the corporate network is very is different. It's completely standalone to the control system that we have at the power station. Uh, I cannot dial into the DCS system and and watch it. We have got a plant historian uh, that we use as an interface for for read only writes to the plant. 
Um, we do have, in saying that, we do have firewalls uh, within the business that allows us a remote access for a hotline, for example, with Siemens dialing in from Germany when we do require to do a modification. Uh, so it gives you perspective of that the corporate network is def kept, kept completely separate to the DCS control system at, at the power station. Cybersecurity is very much on the front line for us. Any changes that we do on the on the network and on the disk and distributed control system, or or on the legacy network or the Ethernet network or the modified one modbus net mod modbus network is significantly uh, going through uh, our MPPC or manage, management or plan process change process. So um, and, and and there's a new uh, there's a regulation obviously that's come in uh, for la large utilities to ensure cyber security. Uh, we are very much working towards that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ami. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you very much, um, Ami, for Ami, that. Um, Chigoze, are you there? Can you ask your question or do you want me to just go ahead and read it out? It says, good, good, um, good, Dr. Amitot. Um, thanks for the presentation on the thermal plant and asset performance. I'd like to get advice on what training options and pathways there is for graduate engineer with strong interest in STEAM, turbo, machinery, and um, automation controls. So what kind of advice can you give for an aspiring engineer? Um, uh, come and join SSC. Come and join on the journey towards net zero with us. Uh, we every year uh, we've just recently recruited for our graduate intake. There will be another graduate intake. Um, uh, so come come and join us. Uh, there is uh, there is a lot of ample opportunities for in, in steam turbine rotating plant. There is um, new. It's not a secret. We are looking at uh, Peterhead two as a new uh, new power station at, uh, in, in close vicinity to Peterhead. There's options at Kid B two Kid B3, which is something we're looking at. There's Kidby Hydrogen, which is 100% hydrogen. So there is a lot of opportunities within, within SEC Thermal for implementing uh, a career in, 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 in rotating plants, steam turbines. Uh, what advice would I give the person? Um, stay current uh, Stay current to the affairs of what's happening with the business. It's a very changing, uh, complex uh, domain at the moment. Uh, renewables and thermals go hand in hand. Um, so I, 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 my advice to any young graduate would be to ensure, keep up to date with what's happening with the uh, energy context uh, and, and, and see where the opportunities are lying. But we certainly have a lot of opportunities um, within our, our business for thermal th rotating plant. At rotating plant, young engineers, we have got a very comprehensive graduate training program. Uh, the engineers do a rotational plant on outages, get hands-on experience before they land on site as, as a young young asset engineer when they are trained uh, along the process. Okay, that's very useful. Thank you very much. Um, Nadeep, are you there? Would you like to just ask your question as well, please? Okay, it says, hi, what tips would you recommend while setting up an asset management system with with where there is none in place. Apologies if the question has already been answered. So what's what what would you recommend? Um, setting up an asset management. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, um, we are we are on a journey at the moment. I don't think, as an organisation and thermal, we are there yet. Uh, we have got very comprehensive engineering standards, which which is a baseline, uh, a backbone for us to what uh, what maintenance we need to be undertaking on 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 our assets. As where we are currently working comprehensively is on the asset information side of things. Uh, we are very comprehensive in our risk management processes that we have in place. Um, so it's a journey. I would what advice would I give is uh, do it's it's a step by step process. We currently don't have asset management plans for all our assets uh, at Peterhead. We are currently working on a journey doing step by step. For example, one year we will do critical assets like CW intake, where we talked about the very first few slides where the, where the CW chamber comes in, which is critical for the state. Then another year we will do steam turbine, the third year we will do gas turbines. So I'm giving you a bit of an example on how would you go on a journey of doing smaller assets at a time as opposed to try to bite off everything in one, one bullet. Okay, that's very useful and that makes a lot of sense. Um, Mini is saying, are there any plans for upgrades, for upgrading any of the infrastructure to reduce carbon footprint from the power station? 
Um, so the the way we, we have, as as we know, we it's we are one of we are the largest polluter of CO2 in in Scotland, um, but we are doing a lot of we think we're making a lot of inroads, as you can see from my slides, the innovation and growth opportunities. Every innovation and growth opportunity we have at the station is to ensure that efficiency increases. A and B, uh, we reduce our carbon footprint. So by by providing more flexibility, by by being able to come on faster, um, come on faster, come do come down faster is very quick anyway. Come on faster instead of coming on taking nine hours, you're coming taking six hours. So that different the delta T or delta delta difference is the carbon savings that we have, uh, along with being energy efficient, or being stable export power limits instead of running at high loads, we are running at low loads, thereby providing another Another, another another avenue of CO2 savings and energy efficiency at the power station. So uh, the, another example of that is steam loss management, where we're trying to ensure that we increase the efficiency of the station, offering frequency response uh, responses at low loads, again, is another avenue that we're exploring. But we're not physically looking to, uh, VSD upgrades is one of the only avenues that we've got at the moment that we're looking to physically replace um, assets on uh, for, in, for energy efficiencies. But um, we're not, every project's is is analyzed on its on its merit, but VSD upgrades is the only one that we've got that we're looking at for in, for reducing carbon footprints. Okay, then thank you very much for that. Um, um, Chi says great presentation with the increasing popularity of digital twin technology. Is there any area you're contributing that for the power plant? Uh, no, that is an area of for a lot of development for us at the moment. Um, in, in all honesty, that's something that we haven't really embarked on. Uh, what we have done is we have got over 5,300 analog points. So every machinery, any analog point that varies in, in, in real time, we have got uh, artificial algorithms in place for 5,300 analog points that are using a smart algorithm called it's the GE proprietary product that we use in thermal called GE Smart Signal that looks at the actual 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 um, uh, value in analog value versus the, what the model predicts it should be, and then drives an alarm on that. That's been quite successful for us as a business. We've been able to um, look at and identify uh, uh, even before an alarm comes in. So a deviation, for example, a CW bearing temperature of, of, of five degrees, which is so minute a difference of between the delta T between what it should be and what it is, it allows us to dr drive alarms even before it hits an alarm set point, which may ha hit it in another 10 days time. So the, the GE smart signal technology is something that we are using Quite comprehensively and, and within the, with the whole thermal fleet for us, we have we are quite uh, quite fortunate because everything, as you can see in the slides, everything is constrained to one power, one small area, and it is heavily monitored uh, via analog analog uh, analog signals, and all of that is fed, fed back to um, to GE Smart Signal for for monitoring and analysis. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I just saw on the chat saying SSC recently became a member of EFE UK, so that's excellent news. Um, Tegwan wants to uh, um, ask, a, ask a question. Could you elaborate a bit more on the ISO 15, 55,000 certification? Uh, as I said, we um, we are currently working towards it. Uh, uh, towards it, it's a it's, it's a journey that we are on at the moment. Where it's not quite there. Uh, I, I think we are um, in sort of we're not in a, a mature scale. If you were to look in the scaling system, but it's it's a journey, and I would think it will take us a few years to reach uh, in, in, in the end destination. So I think it's it's fair to say it's 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 not it's a complete the process is not complete yet. Oh, okay, that's that's fair enough. Thank you very much. Um, another question from Eva. It says, "Can I ask why you manage your black stats for return of critical services via external provider at Greco rather than managing in-house?" Okay, so we at the moment uh, we do not have a black start black start facility at the power station. We cannot start uh, if the station would if the grid were to go black. We cannot start. Uh, 
can I do a black start from Peterhead Power Station? Uh, we currently have to tender with National Grid, which we'll find out end of this end of this week if we've been successful or not. Uh, we do need approximately 20 odd megawatts to get the station up and running. That's just the ancillary load that we have to supply ourselves uh, in in a black start environment. So we do not have that facility to to do black start. These generators, which you see on my screen, these generators are only for load restoration, meaning that uh, if the supplies in National Grid were to go down, the grid were to go black. When we do come back online, the power was restored to, to be the head power station. At least we have the critical supplies, lube oil systems, the generators are not degassed, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole rest of critical services that ensure that supply is maintained at all times. So once the supply is maintained, given back to us by National Grid, we can promptly and very quickly come back online. So we do currently have a contract uh, with National Grid for ensuring the load restoration. Um, I don't feel comfortable telling the number of hours we have to be online within, but as soon as the supply is restored, we have to come back online within a certain number of hours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and understandably so. Um, also, one of the comments is we'll be holding a transition program alongside SSC. Um, I'm going to just talk about, you know, our upcoming events in a bit. I'm just conscious of time, so I'll just go through the question. Um, is, thank you for the answers. I believe VSD upgrade will be a very good upgrade. I believe yes, the upgrade would be a very good upgrade you should focus on. That's just a comment. And um, let's see, what else is there? Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Hami, for such an informative um, presentation. My question, I just have two questions, but very short. What are the major challenges or blockers that tend to affect the management and maintenance of these key assets? And the second question is, what planning tools and techniques do you deploy or tend to use to prioritize and schedule this maintenance work? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, so what challenges that we face? I think we've got a, one of the first ones is we've got a, an assets. They've got a mixture of a variety of service age. We've one, on one hand, we've got 40, 40 year old assets in the steam turbine and ancillary plant. On the other hand, we've got gas turbines, 20 years old. Uh, we've The assets have been through a, quite a bit through their life cycle. Um, we have got a challenging uh, capital investment program or, uh, and revenue investment program at, at the power station, uh, seeking funding and ensuring that we are competing for the same funds uh, with, other, with our sister thermal plants uh, can be challenging at times, but which is right, rightly so. Um, we have got challenges ensuring that the old valves, for example, they don't pass when we do need to do in a start. We, we are finding that the number of starts that the block does, traditionally, traditionally if you look at historic performance on average, on a very rough average, we do around five block starts a month. So five block starts could be come on on Monday, stay on and come off on Friday, the five weeks in a month, roughly that's sort of on, on average. We're finding with, with significant amount of renewable penetration on the grid that the block starts on average, again, on average on a year that has gone up from approximately five to nine to 10 block starts a month. Uh, and that's current current trajectory at the moment as well. So uh, we are uh, we are being used a lot more on and off. That creates thermal cycling fatigue on, on older assets. Valves are opening and closing a lot more time. Breakers are opening a lot more. Uh, so as a result, there is there will be fatigue on assets um, for us. Something for us to, we have to manage going forward. Uh, one of my challenges has always been to ensure uh, it, this station is a hybrid station. It's one of the only ones in the world where you, where you have, or actually it is the only one in the world where you have a 40 year old machine in the steam turbine derated from 660 to 400 megawatts. And then all of a sudden on the side, you have installed three gas turbines to power the steam turbine, which was run by old, old fire boilers. We have checked anywhere in the world. We don't find any other similar configuration. So we're unique in what we are operating. We've got a unique beast that we always tell other individuals. It's not a conventional CCGT site that you find in our sister stations at Kidby or Medway. So the challenges for us uh, are operating service as assets, ensuring they're reliable, ensure, ensure they're av available, ensure we start and stop at the same at times where the national grid need us. So that is a, a major challenges for us. 
on, on your second question on planning, uh, Wilson will obviously tell you a lot more than what I do, but we use Maximo uh, and we've got inbuilt setups in, in there to understand what is, pri pri what is a pri priority based on a peer assessment. So we have got planned, um, plan being people, environmental asset and reputation uh, that we, we, we consider quite significantly. We've got risk assessment tables that, uh, that we assess each defect that comes in. Uh, we have got a defect review meeting every morning to understand what criticality it has on our production. Uh, from there, we try to understand what is a production profile looks like for the going, going for going, looking ahead on the next 24 hours. There's a scheduling department that schedules work. There's a planning department that plans and ensures that work can be undertaken and the work that we, we were looking look forward to, uh, we uh, outages and the programs just use conventional conventional software, just like my Microsoft Project, which Wilson, Wilson leads for us to ensure that we can plan within the start and start and the finish dates. So hopefully that gives you um, a bit of a context, Stephen. Hi, Ali. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, can you ask? Elaborate a bit more on your association with IAM, the Institute of Asset Management, both personally and as an organization. Um, I believe we, as I believe, as an emphasis on the word belief, that we believe SSC is a member of IAM, although I need to double check that. Um, uh, I, I am, I certainly have uh, been associated recently with. Um, uh, with, with, as, on a, as a volunteer on a GFAM, which is a global forum of asset management that, that there was a review undertaken. So I volunteered on that. I was part of the 15, 20 individuals uh, up, uh, updating the global asset performance management system uh, guidelines um, that was recently been proposed. Um, I've also just recently completed diploma in asset management, um, but we follow their principles. Uh, we have close association with IFM, uh, with IAM on the how we should be managing assets. Apart from that, there is no major other uh, other associations with IAM. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Ami, and thank you very much, everybody. I'm just going to share. Um, my slide just so that we can quickly run you through our programs coming up. So, um, okay, <laughs> okay. So um, this is AFB, AFB, the Scotland branch. Um, we have um, programs, um, Next Gen Transition. This is one of these real projects. We have the leadership and the mentoring team. Um, real projects, we equip engineers for the life within. Basically, we try to something like this, tell you about the real life industry challenges that we face on different various topics. We run seminars, workshops, courses. And um, just to go ahead to our upcoming events. So there is, um, oh, well, actually, this is just to say, please join AFB. The information is available on the website. It's a lovely organization to be part of. I've been here since, I've been a member since last year and the benefits are, you know, immeasurable. And um, upcoming events, we have the next gen. What is, what is the point of mathematics? Next gen basically looks at people from age eight upwards, trying to get them involved in the STEM careers. Very interesting, Dr. Naira is going to be, Chamberlain is going to be the one um, holding this um being the host for this on is on sat this Saturday the first. Um we have an um, a round table coming up as well. And um all this information will be available on the website. I think that's May the 5th. There's a transition event. We really want to highlight this one. So transition it basically runs workshops and interviews and is in partnership with Wood Wood um Wood and um we're looking for volunteers for this. So if you do want to volunteer um, you can contact, um, can somebody please help me put um, AFB um, email address or transition? Oh yeah, I, I put it already, so it's a transition. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the chat again. Okay, yes, please. So transition events, we really do need volunteers for it, you know. Um, it's basically giving back to, you know, to the young generation, helping with mock interviews, helping with assessment, and, you know, it's in partnership with Wood. Um, real project events, which is the one I coordinate, there's um, the maths, math, the maths that can stop an owl. I can't even pronounce that, apocalypse. <laughs> it's happening on the Thursday, the 24th. Oh, yeah. By Dr. It, it's an AI apocalypse. Uh, AI, AI. Artificial oh, AI, intelligence. Oh, AI, yeah. So, um... <laughs> Dr. Naira 
water is going to be talking, oh, AI is really big topic now. And then we have hydrogen from seawater. This is going to be a very interesting one, which is happening on in June. So real projects event take place on the last Thursday of every month. So look out for our pro, um, events, join us and um, participate and be a member of FBA, FBA. Um, details of how to join and the different um, membership um, is available on our website. We also have the Di Diversity and Inclusion Awards com award ceremony coming up. I'm not sure if this date is correct, but basically um, you can get on the website. Sorry? Yeah, that's correct. 21st of October. 21st of October. So yeah, that's at the market. Been, that's been yeah. planned for the 21st of October now. The registration is ongoing, you know, get your space and, you know, be part of it as well. So thank you everyone for, you know, being a part of this conversation and, you know, very interesting. I mean, we're really grateful for, you know, the wealth of knowledge that you've, you've, you've told, talked to us about and even the, you know, the past station. So thank you everyone. Have a lovely evening and we'll see you next time.